In this video, let's cover how to fix a muddy mix. But first, let's consider why mixes get muddy in the first place. Now in this video, all the tips and techniques that I'm showing can be used in any order. I'm not showing a chain or anything like that. So just pick and choose what interests you the most. Now muddiness occurs when too much information is competing in the low mids. So usually between 150 and 450 Hertz. Usually we have the overtones from the bass or the bass synth in this area, some of the kick or 808, and then lots of fundamentals for things like guitars, acoustic instruments, synths, pianos, vocals, and other mid-range instruments. So it can get really busy really quick. Now the key to fixing a muddy mix is finding a balance between these instruments, typically by finding various ways to attenuate the slow mid range, either through EQ, compression, or even thoughtful stereo imaging. So let's take a listen to a mix that's sounding muddy and pay particular attention to the 150 hertz to 400 hertz range, which I'll also solo, and notice just how much information is present in that small range. Next, let's use some dynamic EQ or multiband compression to fix the mud. Like I was saying last chapter, we need to find ways to attenuate this range if we want to clean up our mix. We could use traditional EQ and attenuate some of the low mids with a bell filter on any instrument where it's appropriate, like maybe the guitars or the pianos. But I found a slightly more useful method in using multiband compression or dynamic EQ. I'll still create the same filter over the range that's responsible for the muddiness, but I'll make the attenuation dynamic so that it only occurs whenever the range becomes too loud. Now how much you attenuate is going to depend on the mix, but a few dB is a good place to start, and then you can adjust as needed. Now if we want to prioritize the lows of one instrument over another, we could also sidechain a competing signal. So say that I have a guitar which is competing with the lows of a piano, and I want the lows of the piano to stay, but the guitar to have a slightly cleaner, higher frequency timbre. I could EQ the guitar, sidechain the piano, and then set the attenuation to trigger whenever the piano's low mids are loud enough by enabling the external sidechain trigger. So let's take a listen to this sidechain example using a guitar bus and a Rhodes piano, and notice how the piano keeps its original response, but the muddiness is reduced by cleaning up some of the space in the guitar's low mids. Next, let's use some frequency-specific bass side chaining. Now let's build on the ideas from the previous chapter and see how we could separate the kick and the bass. Although these are low frequency instruments, their low mids often compete and create a muddy sound. I like to find overtones of the kick that are combining with the bass and attenuate those on either the bass or the kick, depending on what I'm trying to have stick out a little more. Now the Pro-Q3 that I'm using also has a feature that shows where a signal and a side chain signal are overlapping, so that's definitely useful, but it still helps to use your ears. Again, I'll use a dynamic bell, but with a slightly more narrow bandwidth and cause attenuation whenever the kick hits. Let's take a listen to a bass having its low mids attenuated whenever the kick hits. Next, I want to try some bass ducking, but with look ahead. Now one common method for carving out some room in the low mids is bass ducking. In other words, the bass is going to have its full signal attenuated whenever the kick hits. This can be really helpful, but there are some issues with this method that I want to quickly address. In order to have the bass attenuated whenever the kick hits, the attack time needs to be super fast. If we use a longer attack, then the kick's transient and the bass's attack and decay, or its loudest parts, are going to still be playing at their original amplitudes at the same time. However, if we were to use a quick attack, we'll cause distortion to the bass guitar due to the quick attack time being shorter than one full cycle of the bass. This distortion will actually amplify the bass's attack. The added amplitude doesn't make the technique useless by any means, but it definitely hinders how effective it is. Now to fix this, you could use a compressor with look ahead. This way the compressor is going to be able to read the signal ahead of time, and you won't have to cut into the transient to attenuate it, in turn avoiding the distortion. So let's take a listen to two examples of bass ducking. One with a compressor using a super quick attack time, and the other with some look ahead. And although the difference is going to be subtle, notice how the look ahead setting reduces muddiness a little bit better. Next, let's look at cutting unneeded fundamental frequencies. Now, sometimes when we have a lot of competing instruments in a mix, we have to be more aggressive with the attenuation that we use. This is where a high pass filter comes in. Now with them, we could fully or just about fully attenuate a signal's fundamental. So going back to our first example with the guitar and the piano, I could use a high pass filter on the guitar 
and center the band right above the fundamental to create a lot of space between the two. Now since the guitar has overtones, we'll still be able to recognize the notes that the instrument is playing, but it'll just sound as if it has a higher register. Now we'll typically want to avoid this on lead vocals and other highly important instruments, but it's definitely useful on supporting instrumentation like BGVs, backing guitars, and other layered instruments. Let's take a listen to multiple high-pass filters being introduced on various backing instruments, and notice how it has a big impact on the mix's clarity. Next up, let's talk about being selective with saturation. Now, saturation is a great tool for creating a full and impressive sound. However, it could definitely increase muddiness depending on which instrument that you saturate, to what extent that you saturate it, and the algorithm or the emulation that you use. You'll have to be particularly careful with a warm emulation setting, like warm tape, warm tube in particular, warm transistor, and so on. Now, these settings often introduce a strong second order harmonic or a frequency spike that's exactly double the frequency of the affected signal's lowest frequency, or the fundamental frequency. So let's say that the bass guitar has a fundamental of 100 Hz, which I'll demonstrate here with a sine wave just to keep it simple. Now, as you can see, a warm tube setting is going to create a lot of info in the low mids, which could be a good thing if it's needed, but if I'm using this setting on a lot of low and low mid instrumentation, it could quickly exacerbate any muddiness in the mix. So in short, just keep in mind that although saturation is a great effect, it can cause problems if it's used without considering what's being amplified. Now I'm going to purposely saturate my instruments with settings that are going to cause a lot of competing signal in the low mids, and notice how including saturation in this way is going to make the muddiness worse. Next up, let's talk about emphasizing the highs with exciters. Now, one big reason that the low mids causes muddiness is due to the high frequency masking that it causes. 250 hertz in particular masks or covers up a lot of clarifying higher frequencies, mainly around 2 to 5 kilohertz. That said, one remedy for this is to amplify higher frequencies, in turn adjusting the balance of the highs to lows, or in this case, the highs to the low mids. Exciters are a great way to do this. They create harmonics like a saturator, but only on higher, more clarifying frequencies. One good free option is Fresh Air by Slate Digital. It's going to amplify clarifying bands with high shelves like an EQ, but it also creates harmonics in these ranges. Alternatively, you could just use an EQ and boost 2 to 5 kHz on the vocals, the guitars, or anything that's getting buried by the low mids. So let's take a quick listen to Fresh Air being used on some of these buses and notice how it greatly clarifies the mix, even when it's being used at subtle settings. <laughs> Next up, let's talk about the stereo imaging of a signal and how it relates to muddiness. So, so far we've established that muddiness is caused by too much info in the low mids, but another element is the stereo placement of those signals. Now, I find that a mid-side EQ is a great tool to address this. I'll use this Pro-Q3, but a good free option is M Equalizer by Melda Audio. So, let's say that the guitars are contributing to the muddiness again. So far, I've cut out the low mids, but now it feels like some of the guitar's body is missing. And if you don't record with or mix guitars, just mentally substitute any instruments that you do use. Now what I could do is amplify 300 hertz, but on the side image. Now since the majority of the energy is in the mid or the centered image, which I've now balanced for the most part, I could amplify it on the side since the placement is going to delineate or separate it enough from the other instruments. Similarly, I could attenuate the side image on the bass with a high pass filter, this will center the bass's lows and the low mids, and make it more driving and centered. This way the bass guitars or the synths stay in the middle while we can amplify other instruments on the side. Let's take a listen to this technique being used. Last up for this video, let's talk about using intelligent processors. So I saved this one for last since some engineers may not use these types of processors or might not be interested in getting them since they're still pretty pricey, but I thought that it's a good opportunity to show them regardless. So let's take a look at these two different processors. First, the Golf Oss EQ is great at dynamically altering the frequency response to balance a signal sound. Now what's great is that we could isolate the processing to just the low mids of an instrument to reduce the muddiness. That said, it's also going to work if we use it on the full response, but I'd still recommend removing the effect from the sub in the super high frequencies. 
Next, let's take a look at Soothe 2. It's going to dynamically attenuate excessive resonances, which as you could imagine, is really helpful if you have a muddy mix. Now what we could do is use it on the bus or an individual instrument and adjust the pre-emphasis EQ to trigger more attenuation to the low mids. You could get away with using it somewhat aggressively on individual instruments, but it needs to be used subtly if it's inserted on a bus with multiple instruments present. Let's take a listen to both of these processors, enabled one by one, and notice how they both clean up the mix, but in distinct ways. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to check out the link in the description for a free mastered sample of your mix.